So this is a question I get asked a lot here. What is the ideal hair length for a gas mask? And the ideal hair length for a gas mask is actually no um, hair whatsoever. Neither stubble or like beard stuff or um, actual hair on your head. Uh, for practical reasons you can have some hair, um, but you know you need it to be quite short. So the worst bit is sort of stubble and sort of beard hair and everything. That's the one that really breaks the seal on a lot of masks, especially if you have a proper beard. Um, so if you wanted a proper fit with any sort of respirator or gas mask, you'd have to shave your beard off. Certain models of mask obviously seal slightly differently to the face. So if you're using a mask that fits in a certain way, you might be alright if you've got a very short beard or a moustache. But bear in mind that because lots of masks have oral nasal cups inside, that's when I can get the straps out of the way so you can see it. One of those sort of cups there. If you've got a big beard and moustache all around your face here, that's going to block that and not form a proper seal inside. Even if it's a good outside seal, it's still not going to make the mask as comfortable or as practical as it could be. Now, when you have straps, uh, straps kind of work with a lot of hair length. The only issue is the longer your hair is, the more the straps are going to pull at your hair. And there's also the issue that, obviously, if you have too much hair, then it could break the seal. The reason being, a gas mask kind of needs to make a full seal of your face. It's like a suction cup. So, with a mask like this, let me just fully undo the straps to demonstrate this. What we need to do is make sure, obviously, the mask's totally sort of against the skin and not the hair. So, as people keep saying, yes, the proper way to put a mask on is like this with lots of masks, although you don't need to. And then what I do is, once the mask's into my face, just get the strap sort of pulled down right, and adjust all these straps to make a good seal. And hopefully, what you can see here is that it's mostly sort of touching my skin and there's kind of a seal there where the bit of fat on my face is kind of, you know, going around the mask like that. You kind of want that all over. Now if I had a beard here, that could be, you know, blocking the bottom of the mask, breaking the seal. But of course that's not good, but obviously that makes an airtight seal because I've got a good, you know, no hair in the way. If I had a long fringe, that would obviously break the seal there. Uh, my hair is coming to about here on the mask. If it was a bit longer, that could be a problem. Uh, so obviously it's important to bear that in mind. With these masks, that obviously you need to have hair like this, or shorter ideally, and no stubble. I've got a bit of stubble at the moment because I haven't shaved in a couple of days, but um, you know, you don't want much there because a bit more build up and that will break a lot of seals on a lot of masks. So obviously you what you want is basically to be totally clean shaven, almost shaved with a razor rather than um, with hair clippers, but hair clippers are absolutely fine. Now, let's look at a Soviet helmet style mask. These work sort of with long hair, but it's a bit weird, so put him on. As you can see, masks on my head. The mask does go over my hair, but it's elasticated to be tight enough that there's not going to be any air getting through all this section of my head. Because there's actually kind of a band here where the mask's properly tight to my head. And as you can see there, nothing there. If I had a beard again, that would break the seal. But at the moment, my skin sits tight to the mask. So, yeah, as you can see, that's airtight. But again, obviously a beard would get in the way. So what's the most important lessons to take away from this video? Because obviously it's a bit rambly. But beard hair is the worst, obviously. Because if you have a beard that goes down, that's going to break the seal on any mask. Or it goes around your chin and tries to make the suction cup actually on the chin itself. Moustaches could be fine as long as they're short. Some facial hair like that would be alright, but again, if you've got an oral nasal cup on the mask that pushes tightly against it, that could mean more fogging up inside the mask and things like that. Um, head hair ideally should be this length. If you've got longer hair, it might work with some masks, it might not. Um, it's certainly going to be less comfortable to wear, because once you've got the mask on and you've got long hair, it's going to pull at your hair and everything else. So... 
you know that's not ideal but um, what you could do in theory because I know this is done in certain places is to put stuff like Vaseline in your hair and then that kind of makes an oil barrier that makes it airtight uh, not the most pleasant of things but supposedly that would make an airtight seal so there you go that's how you get um, you know, the ideal hair length. The ideal hair length of a gas mask is no hair length. As far as I'm aware, there's no masks where eyebrows, um, you know, get in the way so you don't have to shave them off, but you ideally need very short hair and um, no facial hair for use of a gas mask just because the longer each bit gets, the more risk it has of compromising the seal of the mask. Now, I'm pretty sure that if you're using a positive pressure mask, like self-contained breathing apparatus, that kind of stuff, you'd probably be alright with having a bit more hair because if the seal breaks slightly the air pressure will be forcing its way out stuff couldn't get in but I imagine obviously if you have too many compromises in the mask that will negate that effect so there you go uh, so yeah the ideal hair length for use of a gas mask is no hair